uh, is this visible? Is it visible to everyone? Hello? Yes, sir. Thank you. So welcome all of you. So last day I have discussed about the amplitude modulation and uh, today I need to discuss about the angle modulation and uh, angle modulation here uh, the amplitude is not varied uh, the frequency or phase can be varied okay so uh, according to the angle modulation classification there are two types of modulation techniques and these are frequency modulation technique and phase modulation technique and both are uh, related very closely related okay so first uh, let's start with the frequency modulation okay so here actually according to the definition which is given here the frequency modulation is a technique of modulation in which the frequency of carrier is varied in accordance with the uh, amplitude of modulating signal okay or uh, multiple uh, uh, this can be defined in multiple ways like uh, the frequency modulation is a type of modulation uh, where the frequency uh, information information the message signal is transmitted over a carrier wave by varying its frequency in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal okay or uh, it can be uh, said in this way uh, frequency modulation is the process of superimposing superimposing the message signal onto the carrier signal and the resulting wave with variable frequency is called a frequency modulated wave okay or uh, it rather it can be uh, defined as uh, the process of transmitting information over a carrier wave by varying its frequency in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal okay so in different ways this can be uh, defined so in uh, frequency modulation the frequency of the carrier signal is varied whereas the amplitude of the carrier signal remains and the phase remains constant okay and and frequency modulation is that's why it is uh, so the information is conveyed by a frequency change okay so here is the uh, a diagram where the first figure shows the message signal this one is your message signal or it's called a modulating signal just uh, i have said in the last lecture uh, in case of amplitude modulation okay so the the message signal or modulating signal which contains the information okay and this second signal it shows the high frequency carrier wave which contains no information okay and the last figure shows the resultant uh, frequency modulated wave okay. so amplitude is not varied so it will be same but only frequencies can be varied okay so here it, it has the maximum in this position it will be the maximum number of frequencies okay and in case of in case of uh, the negative cycle this position less number of frequencies okay so the in between this is the maximum point where the frequencies will be much more okay so so the actual uh, the resulting uh, frequency modulated signal it shows the frequency of uh, actually both positive and negative half cycle of the carrier wave is varied in accordance with the instant amplitude of the modulating signal okay this one modulating signal amplitude or the message signal so the amount of uh, change in frequency of the carrier signal that is determined by the amplitude of the message signal as uh, for example let's assume that uh, the carrier signal will uh, 
has a frequency deviation of plus minus four kilohertz. Okay, so in such case, the carrier signal will move up and down by four kilohertz. The frequency of the modulated wave is high when the message signal reaches its maximum amplitude. Okay, in this position, in this position. The carrier wave, as you know, that carrier wave uh, does not contain any information. So even if we change the frequency of the carrier wave, there will be no information loss. Okay, but however, uh, if we change the frequency of the modulating signal, some amount of information loss will occur because because uh, the modulating signal contains the information. So the frequency of the modulating signal should not be changed. Okay, now in uh, amplitude modulation, that was the first modulation uh, technique which was developed to transmit voice signals by using radio waves. Okay, frequency modulation was developed after uh, amplitude modulation. The main advantage of frequency modulation over amplitude modulation is that it is, is, it is more resistance to additive noise uh, than amplitude modulation. Uh, as we know that the message signal contains information. However, we, we cannot transmit message signals to very large distances because of its low signal string. And hence, we use a high signal strength carrier wave to transmit over very large distances. Okay. So the frequency modulation technique, uh, it is used for FM broadcasting, like, like 93.5 FM, 98.3 FM, you have heard about this okay, so FM broadcasting. So it is also used in radar uh, in, in telemetry. So we will discuss the application or the advantage after uh, certain slides. So this frequency modulation and phase modulation both belongs to the uh, angle modulation category. Okay, so uh, when the frequency of the carrier signal varies, the phase of the carrier signal also varies. Uh, similarly, when the phase of the carrier signal varies, the frequency of the carrier signal also varies. However, the, if frequency is varied directly, then it is called the frequency modulation. And if phase is varied directly, then it is called the phase modulation. So these are uh, closely related. So next, here, this is the... Uh, mathematical expression uh, pre presentation of uh, fm wave suppose this is the modulating signal uh, it is represented as this em small em equals to em uh, cos omega mt if this is a uh, waveform modulating signal waveform then this is the amplitude em and because cos term taken here for simplicity purpose, you can use sinusoidal also, and sine also, uh, it, it may be em sine omega mt also, you can write it. So for the simplicity for uh, calculation purpose, we have used the cos. So em equals to instantaneous uh, amplitude where omega m is the angular velocity, which is called as 2 pi fm and fm that is the moderating frequency okay so if you have pen and paper with you you can write it down because we need this this equation okay. so it will be easy to understand the whole mathematical representation of fm so this is the equation number one okay this is the carrier signal and carrier signal can be represented in this way. So Sir, could you show the previous slide once more? Yes. This one. Okay. You can write uh, this equation only okay, em cos omega mt which is equation number one because there are uh, uh, seven eight equations we need to 
represent this FM wave. Okay, sir. Okay, sir, written. Okay. So actually this uh, signal has two important parameters which must be represented by the modulation process, uh, namely its amplitude and the frequency, as you can see it from this uh, equation. This is uh, the amplitude part and this is the uh, FM will be the frequency part. Okay. So uh, it is assumed that the phase relation of a um, complex modulation signal will be preserved. Okay. So by the definition of frequency modulation, the amount by which the carrier frequency is varied from its uh, unmodulated value is called the deviation. So that will be, this is the carrier signal, which can be represented by this equation. Okay, so this is the instantaneous uh, amplitude where uh, the omega c is the angular velocity and the fc is the carrier frequency and phi is the phase angle. Okay. Shall I proceed to the next slide? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is equation number two. Now, this is the FM wave. So it's, uh, as I have told you that that is the, uh, uh, so here the amount by which the carrier frequency is varied from its uh, unmodulated value is called the deviation. Okay, so, and that is made uh, proportional to the instantaneous okay. value of the modulating voltage. Okay. The rate at which uh, this uh, frequency variation takes place is naturally equal to the modulating frequency. And from this figure, which is the frequency versus time, it is represented in this way. So the instantaneous frequency F can be written Fc 1 plus K Em cos omega Mt. Okay, so where well, Fc is the unmodulated or average carrier frequency, which is in Hertz and K that is the proportionality constant where Em cos omega Mt that is the uh, instantaneous value of modulating voltage. Okay. So the maximum deviation, this is the equation number three, equation number three, that is now, uh, the maximum deviation from this particular signal occurs when this cosine term has its maximum value that is plus minus one. Okay, plus one and minus one is maximum value. So under this condition, what I mean the instantaneous frequency is this one. If you go to Fc, one plus minus K E M. That is equation number four. So that the maximum deviation, maximum deviation that is by delta, it is represented by this delta. Okay. So the maximum deviation delta can be K E M F C. And how this is given? Sir, how is equation three coming? This one. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the modulated wave. The combination of these two signals, this one and this one. Okay. The combinations of this one is this F equals to the frequency, instantaneous frequency from these two equations. Okay. It is not uh, given in details. So we have two equations and third number equation can be formed by using this uh, figure this picture waveform okay and that waveform can be represented in this way okay so 
if this uh, reaches to this uh, maximum value then this can be written in this way f equals to fc 1 plus k e m because if the co cos omega m t will be maximum value that is the plus or minus 1. So uh, here we simplified this one f equals to fc plus minus k e m f c now this k e m f c that is the maximum deviation that is the maximum deviation of this signal which is represented in this figure here this position okay this position is the maximum deviation of the figures so this is the equation number six now the instantaneous amplitude uh, so what happened uh, in FM signal, the instantaneous amplitude that is to be given by uh, EFM A sine. This, this is the function of omega C and omega M, which can be represented as a theta. Okay, so this is the function uh, as a uh, function of the carrier and the modulating frequencies. Okay, one type of function we have assumed. Now, uh, so theta basically that is the angle uh, if you can draw a phase diagram okay uh, of amplitude a so theta is the angle traced out uh, by the phasor uh, diagram of a in time t so if a were uh, the amplitude the a were rotating at a constant velocity uh, suppose uh, p say p okay so angle theta will be p into t velocity into time okay the velocity p is not constant uh, but is a variable and is governed by angular frequency which is uh, given as omega equals to 2 pi f okay and it is uh, given in this equation if it is given in this equation so omega equals to omega c that can be written omega equals to omega c into 1 plus k e m cos omega m t and after find the to find the theta omega uh, uh, must be integrated with the respect to uh, time that is in this way it is integrated and after simplifying this one so if omega c into 1 plus k e m cos omega m t dt and after uh, performing this equation simplifying this equation we have omega c t plus k e m sine omega t by omega m okay so this can be written in this way and after simplifying this one, uh, because we know that delta equals to k e m f c, so we have put the value of delta in this position, and we have got theta equals to omega c t plus delta by f m sine omega m t. That is the theta value of theta. So substitute this value theta in this equation here okay, and we can get this value EFM equals to A sine omega CT plus D delta by FM into sine omega MT and after uh, this one we can write it as delta by FM that is used as your uh, modulation index which can be represented by mf so mf equals to the maximum deviation divided by the maximum frequency okay of the modulating wave modulating signal so modulation index of fm can be defined as uh, so in this slide so this is the actual uh, equation of fm frequency modulation wave okay you have to write it down efm equals to a sine omega ct 
प्लस एम एफ साइन ओमेगा एम टी हेलो सर वी हैव टू मेमोराइज दिस थिंग्स यस ओके सर डू यू हैव द बुक ऑफ शॉनी ठीक है शॉनी नो सर because uh, the whole thing is given in that book okay if oh, you can manage okay, it from sir, your I'll classmates try to get it from, if, from others pdf or what the pdf or if you have uh, anyone of this book so he or she can share it uploading the photo uh, yes sare book ta naam ki ek shani मेजरमेंट बुक तुम्हारा ebook you can uh, we should be provided by the college that is also available in our website with uh, various websites that is free of cost okay you can easily download it hmm. not the all so books like this uh, not the all so like these derivations have don't have any relations with each other right yes Ane, we have to some, learn somehow somehow uh, it has but not the fully it is assumed in this way it is not uh, fully explained in any book step by step that is you have uh, like uh, we have assumed one sine wave and the equation of that wave that is the modulating frequency okay the modulating signal and the second one is the carrier wave which has high frequency we have assumed the sum of this type of equation okay and the uh, combinations of this modulating signal and the carrier wave we have got the fm modulated wave and the actual fm after after modulation when these two signals are combined how these signals uh, can be varied or can uh, actual the resulting signal what will be the expression of the resulting signal we can frame it out by with the help of the previous two instruction uh, to to uh, equation okay the modulating signal uh, equation and the carrier signal equations and after that according to the instantaneous values of the frequencies and the relating to amplitude we can uh, simplify the equations uh, step by step in this way okay so did you get this okay sir okay and these are the these are the step by step uh, simplified version Hmm. This is simple integration. Okay, so from uh, so here, this one is your actual FM wave equation, mathematical uh, representation, and from this equation, we can define the modulation index that is MF. Equals to the delta by FM, and what is delta? That is the frequency deviation, maximum frequency deviation. So here will it will be maximum frequency deviation, okay? And the modulation frequency, which is given as FM, modulating frequency, okay? So M F equals to the modulation index equals to maximum frequency deviation divided by modulating frequency. Now in Uh, f m if the modulation index is greater than one, what happen? You can get the uh, various side bands. Okay. Side bands. Now, uh, in case of f m, there are two types of side band mainly. uh wide band and the narrow band 
okay so if the modulation now based uh, wide band fm or side band wide side band or the narrow side band fm uh, can be defined using the or it depends on the modulation index value okay so if the index value modulation index value is greater than 1 greater than 1 i have missed this uh, things which will be written in this position if mf is greater than 1 we can uh, we have the wide band wide side band fm and if the mf is less than 1 we have the narrow side band fm okay like in case of amplitude, uh, if you can remember the amplitude in case of amplitude modulation, there are two side bands which is called FC plus FM on the right hand side and uh, on the left hand side it is FC minus FM. Can you remember this? And uh, from these two side bands, we can uh, got the bandwidth that is 2 FM. Hmm? Can you remember this? Yes, sir. So uh, if it is less than the narrow side band, uh, yes. one. Uh -huh. Okay, sir. So, modulation index of FM actually it decides the bandwidth of the FM and the number of sidebands in the FM wave. Now, in case of amplitude modulation, there are two sidebands, but in case of modulation, you know, there will be much more uh, sidebands will be available. Okay. Second uh, term which is related to this. Uh, frequency modulation is the deviation ratio so what is deviation ratio the modulation index corresponding to maximum deviation and the mod, uh, maximum moderating frequency is called the deviation ratio okay so maximum deviation divided by maximum modulating frequency which is the del max delta max divided by frequency maximum frequency of the modulating signal is called the deviation ratio now in fm broadcasting the maximum value of uh, deviation is limited to 75 kilohertz the maximum modulating frequency is also limited to 15 kilohertz okay now this can be uh, limited because of certain uh, parameters which will be uh, uh, which can be or which will be performed based on the some Bessel's function Bessel's function okay Bessel function. Uh, 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 I think all of you are familiar with the Bessel function. Do you know the Bessel no. function? No, sir. Okay, I have not. No, sir. It. So I have not that slide for Bessel function that will be discussed on uh, next day. I think. You have not heard of, uh, in physics. no sir okay so next day i will discuss about that okay so here is the spectrum okay the frequency spectrum of frequency uh, modulated wave so here you can see it that is the carrier frequency in this middle portion and here the two uh, side bands okay these are the upper side bands these are the lower side bands and that is the a maximum amplitude okay so here uh, on on upper side band so it in case of a fame the actually the infinity number of infinite number of side bands are available and this can be uh, given in this way fc plus fm fc plus 2 fm plus 3 fm 4 fm fc plus 5 fm uh, then fc plus n fm here okay so n number of uh, side bands uh, the frequencies will be there okay so that is the uh, spectrum of frequency modulated wave now uh, from the frequency spectrum we can say that the bandwidth of fm wave is infinite but practically it is calculated based on how many side bands have significant amplitude and the first method which is used to calculate the bandwidth that is called the two uh, that is equivalent to two fm the uh, maximum frequency into the number of significant side bands okay so from the wave 
uh, form we can easily find out the bandwidth of that corresponding signal if we know the fre maximum frequency and the how many uh, sidebands are available for that signal. Now, with increase in modulation index, the number of significant sidebands increases. Okay, so that the bandwidth also increases. And the second method that can be used by the Carson's rule. And Carson's rule says that, that the bandwidth of FM wave is twice the sum of the deviation and the highest modulating frequency. So that is the second way uh, we can measure the bandwidth. So that is 2 into delta, which is the deviation and the highest modulating frequency. The combinations of these two, two, two terms. That will be the bandwidth. Uh, that is the easiest way to find out the uh, bandwidth of the FM wave. And uh, in most of the cases, we have used this process to calculate the bandwidth using the Carson's rule. Okay. As I have told you, the frequency modulation is uh, classified into narrow band uh, FM and the wide band FM. So here, uh, narrow band when the modulation index is small and uh, wide band FM that is uh, if it is large. Okay, modulation index. And uh, this is the comparison between the narrow band FM and the wide band FM. Okay. So the first parameter which is based on the modulation index I have already told you if it is greater than one then it, uh, it is the wide band and if it is less than one it is the narrow band. So in case of wide band the maximum deviation would be possible up to say 5 kilohertz but in case of narrow band it will be maximum 5 kilohertz and range of modulating frequencies are there. Okay, uh, Maximum modulation index is defined. Uh, bandwidth can be uh, calculated in this way and the applications where uh, the FM mobile communications uh, like uh, police wireless or ambulance or short range ship to uh, so communication etc uh, where the narrow band FM can be used but in case of wide band FM entertainment broadcasting purpose which is basically uh, uh, in our TV okay, or FM broadcasting can be given in this way using this signal wide band FM. So that is the comparison. So here the representation of FM which is uh, in FM in time domain format in this way because suppose it is so it is the combinations of the modulating signal and the carrier signal. So it is in time domain. And if it is in frequency domain, then, then this can be represented in this way. Okay, so either uh, the, these are the two representation of FM. One is the time domain, another is in the frequency domain. So advantage of frequency modulation so it transmits uh, all the power. Okay, we have only three minutes. If it is ended, then we have to all uh, join using the same link. Okay. So, now before uh, I think, so basically according to the first point, what I mean all the power that is transmitted in frequency modulation is useful where, uh, because most of the power, uh, it is, it is uh, like in case of, in, in case of amplitude modulation, most of the power is in uh, carrier. Okay, which is useless in amplitude modulation, but here the frequencies are varied, so uh, that is the useful for power transmission purpose. Okay, uh, second is the adjacent uh, channel interference does not take place in the frequency modulation. Okay, it, it is not mixed up with each other. Okay. So, 
if there are uh, more number of antennas are there to receive the signals okay so the uh, adjacent channel interferences will be less or there will be no interferences okay we can easily uh, separate the signals from the different uh, transmitting point and third is the high snr means it's high signal to noise ratio is there uh, so it has less noise simply okay in simple word it has less noise so high signal to noise ratio is there and what are the disadvantages it is uh, it uses too much spectrum space as you can uh, see it from the um, frequency spectrum and the bandwidth is wider because it depends on the uh, deviation and the frequency maximum frequencies and that will be multiplied by 2 so bandwidth will be wider the modulation index can be kept low to minimize the bandwidth used uh, but a reduction and at the same time if you re reduce the modulation index so noise immunity will be reduced okay and used only at very high frequency these are the disadvantages and the applications of different frequency modulation signals are in fm broadcasting i have uh, said earlier uh, in radar or magnetic tape recording systems or in uh, telemetry system 